Hello. So, we've seen in the past, right, that derivatives, they represent the slope of the tangent line. We could use this as sort of a measure for a bunch of different things, right? So we talked about it as like the best approximation of the instantaneous rate of change of a function. But we also use this to tell whether a function was increasing or decreasing and, and a few other things. But it turns out that we can use this to find local extrema as well. So this video, we're finding local maximums and minimums or extrema. So it turns out that this is actually gonna be one of those really useful sort of general things that we are gonna use all throughout the applications. In fact, a lot of the applications come down to sort of manipulating the problem to the point where we can identify that what we're looking for is an extrema somewhere. So just by way of a few examples, uh, obviously maximizing profits, right? Finding a maximum, this is a type of extrema minimizing costs, same kind of idea, and even finding some optimal solutions to complicated systems that usually comes down to sort of finding a maximum or minimum sort of best result in some sense, which again is stuff we'll look at in the future, but just by way of motivation. So as a quick reminder, finding local extrema. So local extrema, uh, they're called local, local extrema, because they apply in a local area. So when we talk about maximums and minimums, we don't necessarily mean the sort of maximum minimum overall. Rather, we want the highest or lowest values locally. So for example, if we look at these sort of two little dots here, this one on the left, this is a local maximum because it's sort of in a small range around it, right? If, I, if you sort of look kind of nearby, it's the biggest part in that small little area. And likewise, the one on the right here is a local minimum, again, because if you look sort of nearby, it's the lowest point. Not that it's the biggest or lowest points overall, right? Because we have the edges of the graph. It's just that local area. And sort of the, the motivating or the big sort of idea here that we want to notice is that if we look at the tangent lines, the tangent lines for these things are both horizontal. And in fact, any kind of extrema where we'll have horizontal tangent lines, as long as it's sort of uh, within both sides. There are some exceptions to this that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later in terms of um, what happens when you have like a closed interval. But for now, this is sort of the key idea. So that means that finding local extrema means basically finding where these tangent lines are zero. So we sort of make this observation, and I'm making this claim, right, that like this is always gonna happen, but it's a good idea to sort of double check that, right? Like how do we not know, like how do we know that this isn't sort of a special case, right? How do I know this is always gonna work? So we're gonna see sort of a quick thing to go through and, and see why this is always going to work. We have claimed that local maximums and minimums only occur where the derivative is zero. Considering this curve, we could add points at the local maximums and minimums, and then draw horizontal lines through them, like this. But how do we know that these points are accurate? Indeed, graphs can only be so precise. Maybe the minimum maximum occurs slightly to the left, or slightly to the right. Or maybe the tangent line has an incredibly small but still non-zero slope. To see why we know that the slope has to be zero, let's zoom in on one of the local minimums. Now, recall that we have seen how the slope of the tangent line can be used to determine if a function is increasing or decreasing at a point. So if we go a little bit before the minimum, what do we notice about the slope of the tangent line? Remember, if a function is decreasing, that means that it's still going downward. So we can't be at the minimum yet. Indeed, we would need to go further to the right until the function is no longer decreasing. Now let's consider what happens if we pick a point to the right of the minimum. What do we notice about this tangent line? Again, remember what this positive slope means. It means the function is increasing, so it is going up. But if we want the local minimum, then we need to backtrack. After all, if the function is going up, then backtracking should lower the value, right? So we need to backtrack until the function is no longer increasing. So if the function can't be decreasing at the minimum, or else we could keep going to get a lower value, and it can't be increasing, 
or we could backtrack to get a lower value, then the only option left is to be neither increasing nor decreasing, which means it has to be neither positive nor negative slope. But that means the slope must be zero. Okay, so we've seen why local extrema occur where the derivative is zero, but always a good idea to ask, okay, you know, this is, this is a thing that we've noticed, right, that local extrema mean that the uh, derivative is zero there, but is that sufficient? So in other words, if the derivative is zero, does that automatically tell me I have some sort of local extrema? And as you may guess, because math is like this, not necessarily. So let's take a look. Um, so we have just classic cubic here, x cubed, nothing special uh, about this particular function other than what I'm about to show you. <laughs> so applying the uh, this rule for polynomials, right, taking the derivative, we get that the derivative is 3x squared, and that's going to have a 0 at 0, right? So we would call this thing a critical point. So a critical point is where the derivative is 0. But as we see here, if I look at it, I can see why the tangent line, right, is horizontal, because it sort of flattens out right at the origin there, right, right around here. It's sort of briefly flat, but it's definitely not a local extrema, right, because the local extrema needs to be the biggest or smallest in that little range, and this is neither of those things, because it's going to be going sort of up to that point and then keeps going up instead of going back down. Okay, so... Critical points are sort of potential extrema, but they aren't necessarily extrema. All right. So typically when this is taught or sort of reflected on later by students trying to take a test or something, we usually remember that the local extrema occur where the derivative is zero because it's sort of the motivating idea, right? We looked at the, we sort of observed right away that that uh, tangent line was horizontal, but really, it's sort of more accurate to say that the local extrema occur when the derivative transitions from one sign to the other, right? So if it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative, obviously to change sign, it has to go through zero, right? To go from negative to positive, it has to pass zero. So there's sort of this reason, as we saw uh, in the little animation bit, that this, that this is occurring at zero, but it's really that transition that's key. So to find local extrema, you do want to find the critical points because that's where they have the potential to occur. But then we want to use a sign chart uh, to kind of tell which of those critical points are actually transitioning from one sign to the other and thus are local extrema. So if we go back to our sort of original motivating example, right, with our, our maximums and minimums. So if we look at, right, on the right-hand side, I'm transitioning from a negative slope to a positive slope, and that's giving me a minimum, right? Because negative slope means I'm going down, then I'm going up, so I have to have a minimum there. Likewise, on the left here, I'm going from a positive to a negative, so that's telling me that I have a local maximum, right? So it's not just that it's zero, I'm also looking at that sign transition to know whether or not it's an extrema and which type. All right, so what do we look at? So local extrema occur where there's a horizontal tangent line, and that means that's where the derivative is zero, and really a little bit more than that, right? We want to know where it's transitioning, positive to negative, negative to positive, right? But since we know that they occur there, we can find these things by first finding where the derivative is zero. So these are the so-called critical points. Again, key idea here is that they aren't necessarily extrema. These are just points that have the potential to be extrema. So then we have to go check. So once we have those points, we go check. We do that by making a sign chart, and determining which ones are actually local extrema by looking for the sign change in that sign chart. And that'll also tell us which type they are, right? If, I, if they start going negative, right, they're going down, and then, so they go down and then up, that means that it's going to be a minimum. And if they go up and then down, that's going to tell us that it's a maximum. Okay. So that is that.